these capacitors are supposed to be within 2% plus or minus. I figure if we're going to read them, might as well be thorough. So I broke out this, the Genrad, and so far it's looking good here. On the first one, it's showing pretty much on the money, just a bit over 0.5 as we can see. So I'll test the other ones and see what we got. The 0 0.05 reads 0 0.053, that's pretty good too. 0 0.005 is just about right on the money, that one is perfect. The first domino, 0 0.005 is also right on the money, you can see right here. You know, if I leave that, it moves, if I bring it right back onto the zero. You know, just, just right, just off the zero right there, that one is just like absolutely perfect. Or just short, just shy perfect. Almost on the money. Like it. Last one reads a respectable 0. 0000. That's four zeros, five four. So last one came out nice too. I'm gonna say that these uh these capacitors are good. We're gonna move past capacitors. Uh this was just a, a nice exercise and a reason to take out the uh the Genrad. I like taking it out once in a while, but we're gonna say those capacitors are good enough for this. We're gonna move on. We start off right off the bat, as we always do, while the, the desk is still reasonably clean uh, with our tube testing. And we got uh, our first candidate, it's a 6X4, and unfortunately we plug it in and our, our gas and short light are, are just immediately going off. Uh, the tube is no good. So, not looking good. It's not terrible, you know, I can get another 6X4 in here, but uh, this will be the first time I've ever seen a 6X4 uh, bed in testing from Heath Kit, so first time for everything. Uh, no further tests can be done this tube. Market is bad, put it on a shelf, I don't know, give it to somebody as a stocking stuffer. Just to show what it looks like with the uh, with the camera off, so you can see these are the uh, the two lights that turn on on my tube tester that, that tell me that I should not be pressing the, the quality button. I don't want to have any current flow, you know, that would probably ruin the tester, have excessive current flowing through here. Once, once any of these lights turn on, you don't go any further. This is the one I was concerned about. This uh, EF94 uh, 6AU6 is the one that got that got beaten to hell by the transformer. Sure enough, this one went off without a hitch. Uh, it has no issues. I, I I did some 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 tapping with with pencil earlier to make sure there wasn't any uh, intermittent shorts, any mechanical problems that were caused, and the uh, the quality is. Is off is off the charts, you know, at, at 27 volts. So, um, according to my tester, at least you know there's no mechanical defect uh, to be found in this tube. So the 6AU6 survived; the, the rectifier did not. You know, such is life. Finally, the last tube here, the uh, uh, six Charlie Lima six, um, has no problems and and works uneventfully. Has good emission. Uh, that one is good. So we have a one bed rectifier. Everything else is fine. That concludes the tube testing. Most of the resistors in this unit cannot be measured within circuit. Uh, the ones that were 1% were able to be measured. I'd found the bad one that will be replaced. You literally have to rip apart everything to be able to measure these resistors. There, there would be no point. Um, so they're going to be measured as a, as a function of the of the unit itself. If the unit could operate normally, the resistors won't need replacing. And if they can't operate normally, then the res resistors will have to be replaced. Back here, the resistors were able to be measured. These that aren't directly tied to ground. You see, all these are tied to ground, and you, you just can't do anything. These, uh, they were able to be measured, and, and some down here were. And they were annotated. And the only one that was found bad out of all of them is this 2-watt, uh, uh, a 47k ohm resistor that um, measured uh, uh, 63k, and that's this one right here, and that was to be expected. Uh, this one will be replaced. Uh, everything else is within specification. I, I see no need to go any deeper. Uh, I did some spot checks, make sure everything was okay, and we're going to call the resistor portion of this done. Uh, this is by no means as complicated as as the oscilloscope job, you know. So resistors done, uh, capacitors are done. We've got a parts list, we've got the tube that we need, now we just need to order the parts and wait for them to come in so we can replace them in this unit. Now we'll uh, scrub the case and we'll see how it cleans up. Case cleaned up really nicely with uh, soap and water and some mild scrubbing. Uh, got the dust out from the inside, uh, case was cleaned front to back. 
Uh, everything's been removed. Not going to do any further work on this. Any nicks or scratches that are left will only edge the character. Uh, handle is fine as well. And this bulb appears to contain a good filament when I look at it, and yet when I hook it up to the multimeter, I'm, I'm reading it open. Uh, there's a good chance that this bulb is no longer good. I'm going to have to replace it with another one. Fortunately, the lamp on the bottom tested good, so that'll go back in. This one is fine as expected. Uh, it never actually shines. This will last forever, as long as it's not jarred in any way that would break it. The front cleaned up a bit. Nothing perfect. I haven't, I haven't taken the knobs off and, and gotten under there, but a little cleanup on front. I polished the um, the display, got a lot of the small scratches out, not the big gouges. You know, it's evident you can't get the big gouges out, but the small ones are gone. I realized that all three knobs in the bottom are wrong. They're going to have to be replaced. The The original knobs look like the, the top two is shown, but it's cleaning up nicely and looking good. So things are moving along. Also be a good idea to test the meter itself. Uh, make sure that the sweep is good when I put a voltage through it, an AC voltage. It reads RMS volts, so AC would be expected. I'm not going to impede this match, and I'm just going to make sure that with a low enough AC voltage, I could go from zero to full sweep and back, and the deflection is good. But the first thing I am going to do, because I'm here, is set the uh, true zero of the meter and tap it a few times to make sure it's okay. I'll do that now, and then I'll connect everything up. Now I can turn up the voltage and make sure the meter is working fine. So here we go. Uh, the meter also makes that the, um, twitch because of the beeping sound is also injected into it. And I know about 1350 should do it, so. And there we go. There's full deflection of the meter. I turn it back down. Oh. Back to zero. So the meter's looking good. Waiting for parts is always a good time to apply deoxit to the uh, uh, switches, potentiometers, and tube sockets. I'm going to do that now. Here's a really nifty tool for cleaning these size tube sockets right here. These are the uh, these are the uh, um, the uh, octal, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not noctal uh, tube sockets. And this is a uh, BSS one one six. So these go right in here if you need to go in and clean these out after you use some uh, deoxit. So that's one way to clean them. The brush won't work for the smaller tube sockets. This 6X4 is going to have one last hoorah and be used to clean out those sockets right here by just uh, putting it in and, and pulling it out to get the, uh, the deoxid in, in to get contacts there. And I'll do it to the other one too. Of all the, of all the things I do on these restorations, this is probably the worst, is when you apply deoxid to a switch and then have to to sit there and go back and forth and observe the contact point to see if it's starting to shine up. I don't like repetitious labor, but this is necessary and deoxid does do a good job. You can see down in there, it's starting to shine again. While waiting for the VTVM to stabilize, I was able to uh, work these other uh, three uh, knobs. These are not potentiometers. These are just uh, rotary switches. It's not fun, but it's necessary. There's only one potentiometer on the top side for regular use. There are two down here. They're just for calibration purposes, but equally important. So they're going to have to be cleaned with deoxid and measured just like this one. This one's ready, so we'll measure it first. I'm doing sweeps on this knob, and this is what I'm getting as I, as I turn this pot. It's coming up halfway and going back down like that it's not coming up to the full potential at the halfway point and starts to go back down i've seen this on occasion and when i do it generally tells me that the pot is good and it's because of an electrical connection uh, the only way to test the pot is to tear this up i'm not going to do that right this is going to be another example of if it functions fine in circuit i'm going to leave it alone if it doesn't function then i'm going to troubleshoot it i'm going to move to the other two I have a, a, a pretty good feeling that we're going to experience probably the same issues with these two as well, but we're going to test it anyway. This one here on the bottom is a, a 600 ohm potentiometer, and when I turn it up, it has a nice sweep, and it goes up to about uh, 550, then back down to zero again. The sweep is good on this one, and the meter I could have here is slightly off. This could very well be 600. This one's good. We're going to move on to the next one. 
again i'm seeing another condition on a sweep this is 10k i could i could bring it up here so we could see it and the 10k makes its way up and just at three it starts to turn back down again again i can remove it from circuit and it'll probably work fine again if the problem reveals itself during troubleshooting it'll be replaced but i don't think there's an issue with this one i'm going to leave this one alone too interesting note i found in my inspection that this connection had ripped off the capacitor. The capacitor is completely eaten away in there. It oxidized through, the electrolyte came out. This broke off. It would not have caused the unit to, to, to completely fail, that is to, to not operate anymore, right? The filtering would have been gone. I mean, the, the unit would have, it, it would have been terrible, it would have ran terribly. So long as this would have not touched the chassis, you know, that would have been catastrophic. But just sitting here like this, it still would have operated. But the but the electric, the uh, the DC would have been had a lot of ripple in it, and and it would have cascaded through this whole thing. Interesting though, huh? I mean, I mean this this thing would have not worked well, you know. And the other one's still attached, but but this one broke off and probably broke off a really long time ago. And there it is, just floating in the air. You see that? Yeah, that's, these, these are going to be replaced by, by two electrolytics under the, this body here anyway. But, wow, very nice. Look at that. I think this is going to be as far as we go until parts come in. At that point, we'll be able to move a step further and get this thing up and running again.